Hi there. Are you a procrastinator like me? <laughs> well, it's not so much that I'm a procrastinator because I did make my first set of paper pumpkin treat boxes as soon as I got my kit. But I will tell you that initially I really struggled putting the box together. Now, while Paper Pumpkin is absolutely fantastic about providing instructions, I am a visual learner and it helps, but I'm also a hands-on kind of learner. And so I thought about that and thought that perhaps if I took a few minutes to share how to make these little boxes, it might save you some time and kind of speed your process along so you don't wait until the night before Halloween to figure them out. So there are some alternative ideas, and at the end what I'm going to do is explain to you what my plan is to make one of these an actual uh, Christmas treat box, okay? But I think they're just adorable, and I am excited that I am making 36 of these, well actually 48 by the time I'm finished, but uh, making them so that I can share them with the teachers at the wonderful school where I substitute mostly. All right, let's see what that's all about. This is probably the most challenging piece, okay? It comes in black, it comes in orange, and they're already, one side of them's already folded over um, to be able to fit in the box, and then it comes in white. Now, the white and then this lavender color are the two that I'm actually thinking I'll save until the Christmas treat boxes to make Christmas treat boxes because those colors to me, they just remind me of like snow flurries or something cute like that. But that's another story and another project. And I'll probably post a picture of it. Uh, so you have to stay tuned to my page. Meanwhile, let's work on our little Halloween treat boxes. Starting with this one. You see that there's two, uh, you know, uh, uh, two sides, obviously the shorter side. And once I unfold the packaging, I'll see that one side is the longer side. And there's all of the crease marks you need are provided. So the way I like to start is with the two shorter ends. That's actually the best way to start because we're going to need those tabs to provide the support. So the wonderful thing about this box is that it is so well made. It is so strong. You can put heavier candy in it or even something like hand sanitizers or little baby hand lotions. I mean, it's about a three by three size. So there's quite a bit that would fit in here. Now I'm gonna teach you a little trick that I didn't even think of until this morning. I've already made 36 boxes, so go figure. Um, but this, just a little dab of tape is gonna help hold that in place. Because let's face it, you only have 10 fingers, right? And there's only so much we can hold onto. So that's gonna make this just a little bit easier. So we've got, um, our fold was inward, and then bring it back out, downward, like a, create a mountaintop, and then inward again, like a valley, and the tape goes on that tab right there. That's gonna be hidden. That's what this beautiful piece is all about. But it's hard to know that if you've not made these boxes. All right, so let's lay that flat again, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go inward, take it back out, fold over, because that's going to make our little mountain top. Okay, and now we're going to fold again, make a little valley. Okay, now we've got that crease ready. Let's start again, inward. That part's not folded yet. Take it back out. That fold was already there in the packaging. And then let's fold this valley. It's going to be have a larger platform because that's going to be the base of the inside of our box. All right. So I'm going to increase that very well. And let me suggest that you use your bone folder and use mine. I tend to have very strong grips. I don't always <laughs> do that, but it may be helpful for you to use your bone folder so that your creases lay flatter. All right. Now, we're gonna go back, lay it horizontally with the long side across. Bring those two shorter sides that you've already put the tabs down on. We're gonna use these short flaps as our reinforcement. 
So bring the shorter side of what's left and you're gonna make that mountain right over the tabs. Okay, because that's what's gonna reinforce this edge. We're gonna turn it around and do the same thing. Bring your tabs in, take that side and reinforce it. Bring it down. Now, there's a nice, I didn't point it out, but there's a nice little tab there with a slit inside that's gonna hold that in place. And these little grooves are gonna help so that you can pull the box in and out. Let me repeat that process again, but this time I'll go a little bit more quickly using the orange one. Okay, I'm gonna crease all my sides inward, take it back out, make a mountain, and then bring it inward again. Go ahead and bring those flaps in just to get the crease going. Okay. I will use my bone folder because it may make it hold better. All right, let's do this side inward, back out, Inward again, because that's going to create my mountain. This flap's going to go flat. There's my mountain, see? And then bring those two flaps inward. All right, again, just a little trick I'm using at this point. That tape will hold those tabs down so I don't have to mess with it when I'm folding the rest of this box together. Okay, so just make sure you get that adhered so that the sides bend evenly. Okay. Now let's go this way to the, um, or lengthwise to the longer it sides. We're gonna start with a shorter end, do the same thing inward, back out, create a mountain fold and bring it in. Now, this is what I didn't show you with the last project. There is a slit there and that's a very important piece because that's what we're gonna hold the base together with, okay? But it doesn't require glue because it's so well structured. Okay, let's go inward, back out, make a mountain. Now make this valley, this is the, the larger base. That's gonna be the last piece to be tucked in. All right, now we have all of our creases. Okay, so we're gonna bring the two shorter sides in that we've already uh, adhered tabs. And we're gonna hold on to these using I don't know, your thumb, your forefinger. I was using my two thumbs earlier and then just kind of bringing this flap, the shorter flap in, make that mountain. Make sure it's over the tabs because that's what reinforces your box. I didn't put tape there because I didn't want to risk uh, closing that slit. Plus, you're going to see by the time I tuck in this longer side, you don't need that extra tape. The only reason I used tape on the first two tabs was just to help my fingers hold on to all the pieces. But there you go, see, very solid. Now the belly band is also very easy. And um, I'm gonna use the white one just to show you because I think it is so adorable, this little spider web. And it's gonna end up like this because all these little embellishments are included in your kit as well as the sentiments. Aren't those adorable? So we're just gonna try making this one, not try, we are gonna make it. Again, you're, you have the uh, crease marks already. Oops, be careful, don't do what I just did. Let's go ahead and burnish those with our phone folder here. Okay, so this crease is a little tricky. I don't wanna mess up my spider web. It's a little more delicate. Okay. So all you, once you have all those folded, you're just gonna put a little adhesive on this one tab and it's easy to know where because see how it um, is, um, gosh, I'm, so the word has escaped me, but it's uh, the tab is more slender. It's been uh, trimmed, okay? So the nice thing about your paper pumpkin is it comes with everything you need, which in this case is the adhesive the stronger adhesive for your box. And this is called tear and tape. It's one of my favorite types of tape that we sell at Stampin' Up. And I just put that piece there on the, out, the outer lip of that tab. And I'm also gonna put just an extra piece at near the crease line, because it just reinforces that. Not necessary, one will do, but this way I don't have to worry about the sides lifting. I'm just gonna use my snips, my other very favorite tool, 
just use that sharp tip, pull those pieces off. The adhesive stays, it separates easily. Now the tear and tape we use at Stampin' Up is really strong. And I, I will admit, whoops, they're my dirty fingertips. <laughs> I will admit that you can find tear and tape in a lot of places, but be careful about the quality. All right, so I'm gonna fold it so that my tab is inward. The nice thing about this box is there's no guessing to it. You just figure if I just fold, okay, two creases, right? and just bring it straight across, it's gonna be a perfect fit. And if I use my bone fold, I'll <laughs> keep it from making fingerprints, right? There we go. That's all there is to that one. And then this one matches nicely with the, the orange base, the paper, the pumpkin pie, we call it in Stampin' Up. And we just tuck that in. Oh, by the way, so this one's easier to notice that the, t the seam is gonna be at the bottom, but in the other two, you just wanna be mindful of that seam as you uh, slide it over the box. So you're just gonna put your little uh, embellishments that come in the kit and decorate the box. Okay, so the primary purpose behind this project, uh, this little video project, was to show you how to make these cute little box bases that looked overwhelming at first. I hope it helped you, and I hope you get your Halloween treat boxes made in time to give away. All right, well, you have a wonderful day, and hope to see you again. Follow me at Stampin' Gloria Crafty Corner on Facebook, and you can go to my store, stampinggloria.stampingup.net. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.